I mean, there's been lots of focus on uh, the Premier League, but in many ways, it's the other leagues uh, that are really going to feel the brunt uh, of the COVID-19 crisis. What do you think should happen in other leagues? Yeah, I think, the, uh, the, uh, as you rightly say, a lot of focus has been, understandably, on the top end of the pyramid, but actually it's the clubs, primarily now in Leagues 1 and 2, that face uh, a difficult time because the real question is, well, the real, the real issue is that these clubs rely so much more on gate income than uh, the other clubs further up the, up the pyramid. And there's some big questions as well about what happens if the leagues uh, don't uh, end up being played. I mean, Tramway Rovers, for example, currently in a relegation spot with a game on hand. Would you accept relegation? Uh, not at this point in time. Uh, we, uh, the, the board put out a statement on Thursday and we're seeking clarification on a number of points and basically what's the basis of the decision, what's the timescale involved, so we can properly prepare our position. Uh, the board did in fact indicate that they, uh, it was a strange phrase they used, they didn't ask for feedback, they just um, wanted clubs to basically think about the proposal that they put together. Uh, my assumption from that is they're prepared to take uh, submissions and in fact they, uh, the board knew and the chairman certainly knew that uh, I was in the process of um, putting together our submission. I think broadly what, what you're looking at is because, and I understand the difficulties, uh, you, you don't actually have um, regulations to cover this so broadly you either continue and play out the season uh, or alternatively you void the season or alternatively you make some kind of change to the regulations which requires a compromise because a lot of the lower league clubs cannot afford to continue playing uh, at this point in time, uh, whereas some other clubs want to finish off and affect their sporting chance. Uh, so if you've got a chance of promotion or if you've got a chance of avoiding relegation, uh, then you should be allowed to do that rather than having something imposed on you which stops that. It's really difficult uh, balancing out, isn't it? You mentioned there the financial issues uh, for some of the uh, clubs that aren't in the Premier League who may see the season voided. Certainly, it feels as if you know, matches in front of live audiences are a long way off. How difficult financially is that going to be for many clubs? Well, I think uh, this is the background context to the, 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 um, what was suggested by the League as a framework on Thursday. And it's a very difficult one because I actually personally believe that you know, we haven't seen the worst of it yet and during the course of the summer uh, you will see uh, a lot more uh, financial stress on the clubs as we move forward and they continue to pay wages. Uh, we're just going through, going through the May, way, uh, pay, the May payday uh, as we speak and uh, that I know has put a lot of clubs under pressure and then when we come to June as well then of course it gets worse and worse. And there were attempts to try and negotiate with the PFA and the players themselves as regards their contribution to what I call a cash hole. Uh, but to date, I, I'm not certain as to where that's got to. Uh, there have been some deferrals of payments. But the problem, of course, is that whilst you may look at the, the, the whole and it's been articulated as 200 million to um, September, I think it's bigger than that. I think you've got to add to that um, deferred creditors, which is not, I don't think is calculated in that figure. These where you've, you've put off um, paying PAYE, etc., and also advancing advances of income. So, you know, there is a real financial maelstrom coming towards the league at this point in time. Uh, and, and that's one of the reasons why we at Tramir do not want to have um, what is a, a decision foisted on us, which is basically going to affect us financially. And fundamentally, when you come down to it, the reason to try and um, stop playing out the league is based on a fundamental decision. So, you know, why do you do that? And then, uh, you know, in terms of certain clubs, foist on them uh, an even worse position. Yeah, it's a really worrying times, particularly when you consider how important so many of these clubs are to their local communities. Do you think that we could see football clubs going to the wall because of this? Yeah, it's, it's always very difficult not to be sensationalist because people will pick up that comment and say, you know, uh, former chief execs, chief execs clubs going to the wall. I, I was an insolvency practitioner and worked in turnaround. And I think what you'll see uh, is that a lot of clubs will sort of go down and stumble down that road to insolvency. Uh, you might see people um, uh, going, getting high court orders against them, etc. But the whole process around that is delayed anyway. So, you know, they'll, they'll bumble on for a period of time. Uh, what I've um, spoken to the EFL about, and I asked a question about two weeks ago, uh, as one of the ways in which you prepare for the debacle that's coming, the financial uh, debacle, then, you know, have you looked at using the administration? And, and there were talks about dealing with the insolvency service to get what we call light-touching administration, and that enables basically uh, 
I was going to use a technical term, debtor in possession, but enables the management to continue on. Because this is nobody's fault. This is a pandemic. And if you do that, if you get light touch administration, have they worked up a, you know, a panel of insolvency practitioners that they can trust uh, and you know, not to sort of absolutely sort of uh, charge exorbitant fees, etc. They're the types of things that the EFL should be doing now to prefer for the eventuality that some of the clubs may go into administration. And in addition to that, looking at the sporting sanctions that you introduced, because once again, this isn't necessary as a consequence of financial mismanagement. This is as a consequence of the pandemic. And therefore, I think they need to be considering that, you know, clubs may need to go for the protection of administration, which in itself, if, you know, if you're an insolvency expert, you know that that was brought in on the basis of trying to help and help cl cl clubs and, well, help, help companies survive. So it is a rescue procedure if applied, and I think it needs to be modified for the circumstances of the pandemic.